Hey everybody, welcome back to my vlog. Today is Redness Day. It is May 26th at uh, 2 p.m. here in Las Vegas. So um, everybody, welcome back. It's uh, my vlog. Howdy, Red. How are you today? Ah, uh, warm, hot. <laughs> Warm and hot. It's getting it's heating up here in Las Vegas too. It's in the uh, high nineties here. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 up there for us today. It's in the eighties anyhow. So let's start this one a little different than uh, the rest of them. A uh, couple quick hellos, Lisa, Scott H, uh, Pam. Uh, Hi, Pam. Nice, nice <laughs> to see you guys. Uh, Chain Weavers here, Sean Pender. It's good to see you guys. Um, oh, you folks, uh, oh, yeah. good. Yeah, right. So uh, I'm red. I am. Uh, I, I'm still in a state of shock right now because uh, yesterday I woke up to a phone call, which was the last phone call in the world that I ever expected that I would have. Uh, and after everything, and I know that most of you, uh, unless you're, you're new here, most of you know that this last. 12 months, 15 months, whatever, 18, have been months. 18 months. Is that how long that, that I've been going through this crap? So um, all the losses that, that I've had from between Frank, my father, even my, even my dog started off with my dog in March of, of 20, but, but last, uh, well, yesterday Not morning, I had surgery. And what's that? Not to mention and, your mother had surgery. Yeah, not to mention that my mom also had some some things done, but I uh, I got a phone call and my my best friend who who I've known since I was eleven years old, who was my age, we grew up across the street from one another, died yesterday morning, and I'm I can't even wrap my head around it still. So yesterday was a really tough, long, really crazy day, and I and I just still can't wrap my head around it because it's crazy and. Anyway, I thought that I, I I thought we could start, and I just want to share that with you guys. And you know, yeah, Pam, life sucks sometimes, uh, but but it's. I guess I just want to say, you know, not to forget to go live life, because <laughs> you, you never know. You never know. Savor every right? minute of it. Savor every minute of it because you don't know when it's over. Just don't know, you know, and it's uh. It's just crazy. Out of everybody that I know and is around me, is just the last person that I, you know, just the not. It's the last person that I'm. I expected that I, I would hear that. So, um, yeah. So Pam, he he did. He got he got sick. I'm not going to say what it is uh, because we're not going to use those words on the channel. I'll say he got the bird flu. How's that? And uh, and, I, and I shared my experiences with him on Sunday about it, and said, "Watch your your oxygen levels and stuff." And then, you know, if it, if it, you drop, you know, below whatever, go to the, the hospital. And and he, he he didn't make it to the hospital. So I'm sorry, Adam. Yeah, I, I'm. Thanks. I just I can't wrap my freaking head around it. So I'm really sorry, guys, that that I'm I'm starting it out like this. But I, I just wanted to. Uh, first, I want to let you know that my I'm just not. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's why uh, that's why we we have the subject and the title today of Chicago outfit history. <laughs> so Red, let's talk Chicago outfit history. Um, and, uh, and, and see where you guys want to go. You guys let, you know, let us know where you want to go. We'll pay attention to the comments as we're, uh, as we're going along. So, uh, thank you all. I, as you're putting these in the comments, your condolences, thank you guys all appreciate all of the Lisa said, my uncle said the same thing, Adam. Yeah. You can't, you just, I don't know. You just I don't know. So <laughs> just don't know. Anyway, um, what a what a crazy time that we're going through right now and uh it's just a crazy crazy time can i say so chicago heights history i think that, that that's a fantastic that's a fantastic topic and uh red who ran the heights that was that uh el taco 
No, when I was there, it was El Palato. That's what I meant, El Palato, right. Uh, Taco did run it later. Mm -hmm. uh, but before then, it was Jimmy Katura. And they kind of shared it. Laporte, Frank Laporte and him shared the heights kind of together. It just so happened that this morning, Mike Byrne put up something in his room, the Chicago Past and Present News article about uh -huh. Jimmy Ventura, and it talked all about the, the Heights history. And I was reading it, and I was looking at the history back, things I didn't know, mm -hmm. because I only know what I saw. But Al Palato, you know, actually, they kind of, the Heights crew kind of ran um, – Cal City, too. They, they did, yeah, yeah. That kind uh, of belonged to them over there, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that was uh, – that whole area and all of the, the – you know, as a kid, and I, I know I've said it before, but as a kid growing up in Calumet City, every bar – and there were more liquor licenses per capita in Calumet City than anywhere else in the country. We had more – and it was all the all the boiler makers, all the guys worked in the steel mills. That's who that's who lived in Hammond and Calumet City and East you know, Chicago, Indiana. East Chicago, yeah. That was all steel will, uh, mill oil refineries. It was uh, foundries, you know, foundries. Yeah, right. Foundries. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, it's kind of a Polish neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It, it was. But the, you had the Hungarians in the neighborhood, too, and the Germans and the Irish. And, the you know, I had a McNamara as a neighbor and uh, and then a Horvath down the street, which was Hungarian. And so but anyway, in, in that in that area, every bar in Calumet City had at least three machines in it, a pinball machine, maybe a pool table, a small pool table, not regulation. And. That was that was uh, uh, in those machines. They had little pieces of paper marker that said for amusement only written on them. And I remember sitting there watching one of the other firemen that my dad worked with, and he's sitting there just sliding, you know, bill after bill into this machine. And I walked over to him and I was like, "Geez, Mister S," I said, "How come? Uh, how come you keep putting the money in there if it's for amusement only?" I mean, come on. You could play a hands of cards. He's giving his money away. <laughs> you, could, you could play hands of cards with a deck of cards over here for nothing, right? You don't have to pay five bucks a hand or two bucks a hand, whatever it was. But And, and he looked at me and he said, kid, if you know the bartender, it's not for amusement only. <laughs> and uh, and that, that was it. If you, if you did, the bartender would come over there, click the thing on the back of the machine. <laughs> You'd hear it ticking, you know, and all the credits and all that. And then they'd take an envelope out from behind the bar and they'd pay the person out, whatever it was. And that envelope never existed, I guess. So, and then I guess somebody would come by to collect and split the money up with the bar owner and, and whatnot. So I always thought that was shady when I was a kid. I always wondered why. I didn't understand what was going on. There were a lot of places in the Heights if they had something going on, like bookmaking or something like that, they didn't split with them. They didn't split with them with the coin ops. But right. you're younger than I am. I never saw the electronic machines like the, I never used one, a, a joker poker or yeah. whatever. I yeah. never, they didn't, uh, they didn't have those then. And I never saw anything that you could put a dollar in. It was all coins. <laughs> They just yeah. didn't have it yet. It wasn't. Oh out. yeah, yeah. The dollar. They were the. They had the dollar suckers on them when I was a kid. So they had the dollar suckers on them, and I, I, uh, yeah. And I, I, there was another guy I worked for, and he, uh, uh, he, he took me around the back once in the back room of a place, you know, that we, one of the the clubs I worked at, and and it was all filled with those machines, and I was like, well, what's the deal with all this? He's like, oh, it's for parts, you know. For parts, like really, two hundred of them. You know, <laughs> they're all put together. They don't look like they're parts. You know, like <laughs> broken down machines or something. Yes. Well, the Heights was um, the Heights was an extended territory too. I mean, they ran west as far as Joliet, mm -hmm. and it went down to Cal City on State Street. So. And State Street right, went right through um, East Chicago, Indiana. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it did. Uh, I lived for a short time on State Street, right across from 
South Chicago Heights Police Department was right across the street from me. Okay. On State what? Street. In what town? South Chicago Heights. Okay, got it. Okay, on State. Wow, that that's uh, State. Yeah, State. In one well, Calumet City, there was State and State. State Street and State Street. I lived oh, on sorry, State, State yeah, Street and going, State Line, rather. If you State kept going, Street. you went right into Chicago Heights. Yes, took you right in there. Yes, it did. Uh-huh. Yeah, that whole area, that whole area. As a matter of fact, somebody somebody put a book out, and I haven't read it. Um, I want to say it's called The Chicago Heights Boys or... The Boys um, from Chicago Heights. That's it. Yes, that's it. Have you read it? No, I have not. You've not read it, but you knew the cover. You knew the you. Well, I <laughs> you, knew, you knew the title. I, I yeah, it. I went on Amazon, and they let you read so many pages if you uh -huh. open up the book. And I skimmed it, and everything in there was accurate. That's oh yeah, the book right there. That's the yeah, one. This is this is it. Yeah, this is it. The boys of Chicago Heights, the forgotten crew of the Chicago outfit. Matthew Luzzi. Matt Luzzi. Yeah, Matt. You know Matt Luzzi. I don't know him personally, but I've seen him on uh, Facebook a lot. He's in a lot of the different mob groups. Oh, he is. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's somebody probably contact and uh, maybe somebody you could reach out to, actually. He's a good man. Interesting. So, yeah, is anybody out, any of you guys, have you read the book? And if you have, put in the comments what you thought of it. Uh, interesting because, yeah. Maybe pick that up and uh, maybe I'll grab the Kindle of it and, and read it. What is it? 11 bucks? Yeah. Uh, so, um, okay. And it's a friend of yours, Sean, huh? <laughs> Sean Pender. Oh, Sean said, oh, he's a friend of him. Okay. Uh, it's, good book, it's a good book, Sean. I imagine it is. Um, did you ever go to the Jimmy Lombardo's Huron Social Athletic Club by Smith Park? No. No. Okay. Just a random question that somebody yeah. threw out. Roger Wahlberg from Bensonville, ring a bell? Not at all. Sorry, Rusty. Uh, so, so anyway, back to Chicago Heights, which, by the way, I mean, nowadays, you don't want to go into Chicago Heights. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough area. You don't area. want to go to Hammond. You don't want to go anywhere over there. No. Calumet City is really, really, really bad, too, now. Um, just terrible. So, hey, folks, give Adam a break and hit the like button. <laughs> yeah, hit the like button, guys. Sure, even if you don't like it, hit the like button. Why not? Say, so, hey, what the hell? Be a little crazy today, you know, a little wild and smash the like button. So, uh, so sh Chicago Heights, back to that whole, uh, whole thing. Al Palato, Al Taco. All involved uh, in Albert Taco was, was the last one that was in charge that I knew of. He was in charge when, uh, well, he was involved with uh, Tony. His death. <clears throat> he was. Um, that was his. His boss. He was crew boss then. <clears throat> now he was involved with also the. Bit burying of the uh, of the yes. Cilatros. So well, he was there for the beatdown too. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. What, what didn't something come out in the in the in the family yeah. secrets or something about what yeah, was the what was the story with that? The story was uh, Jimmy Marcello uh, took each one of these people or, or groups of these people. He picked them up at different locations, like Nick Calabrese. Uh, he brought him. And he didn't know where he was going. None of, none of them knew where they were going. But they went to this house in Bensonville. And they were told to do whatever they were told to do. And naturally, they followed orders. Nobody really knew if they were going to get hurt or what was going to happen. They're, they didn't know what was going to happen until they got there. <laughs> it was right. left. So nobody could say anything. Nobody could give any warnings. Mm -hmm. And during the afterwards, some of the people left and some of the people didn't. Well, some of the people that didn't loaded up the bodies in the trunks of in the trunk of the car, and they brought them out to Indiana. And what used to be, yeah, you're, the picture there, 
see the trees and everything? Mm -hmm. That used to be Joey the Yupa's hunt club years ago. They were so goofed up because the Yupa wasn't around and everything. It was so messed up. It was crazy. So what did they do? <laughs> they picked the soft dirt that the farmer just tilled. You can see he just tilled the land. And right, I mean, right, it's right on the edge, literally right. on the edge of that forest. But it was nighttime. So they had several cars mm -hmm. and they left the lights on in one of the cars. And when they left the lights on, the battery went dead because they were digging a hole. You know, it's nighttime, right? And oh the battery gosh. was dead. They went to jump it with another car and the alternator blew. When they were when they were jumping the other car, and one car caught fire, it was left out there. They all were walking. It was kind of like Appalachia, where they all ran through the woods. And he called his wife, never knowing that it was on a wiretap on his house. Oh, so boy. they knew about this way before Family Secrets. They knew about it way back when it happened. They just didn't have all the players, and they couldn't prove it, but they waited. They waited until they got it all together. But he called his wife, and uh, she's talking on the phone about – she was bragging about how much money her husband made, this and that. And she signed the same income tax returns. So they pull her in before a grand jury, and she's a target. And they mm -hmm. tell her, you're going to prison for income tax evasion. Let's make a deal. Uh huh. So they made the deal. And she testified against her husband and told the whole story. It was all in, in court. She described every bit of it. Yeah, Sean, Sean said, right, Red. El Taco lived on 207th and Western. House is still there. Has tinted front bay windows. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, Nick Macy. Mike Byrne runs the old and current group. Got to clear that up, Red. Chicago Outfit, Past and Present News, I believe is the name of it, Nick, is it not? Chicago Outfit, Past and Present News. Is that what you said, Brad? Yes. Articles. Past and Present News articles. Uh, you're talking about the Facebook group, correct? Right. Right. So, yeah, there's uh, there is a Facebook group, and I guess in that group, uh, he's got my book right there on top of it. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Mike Burns shared a link, yes. Um, and there's your thing. So, again, in this group, there's guys, the about Jimmy Katura right there. I just read nice. it this yeah. morning. Yeah, it talks all about the heights. Oh, very good. So if you guys are interested, go check out this group on Facebook. You guys can read these articles. It seems Red Red Red's told me about this group before. It says they really keep things up to date and they really uh do a lot of digging and put, you know, put put a, a lot of information up here that's that's past and present even though even though the mob doesn't exist anymore. Well, Mike has a disclosure on top that says he doesn't go back any further than 1960, but occasionally he will. Oh, very interesting. Cool. Well, thanks for thanks for uh, uh, sharing that. And uh, Mike, thanks for running this page. It looks really cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into it and uh, do a little bit of. Uh... He knew a lot of people that I knew. Okay. I got I got on his page in 2016, and he put my book up there so people could purchase it. And there were a lot of purchases made from that book, you know, because all you do is click the book and it goes to my PayPal and you can order the book, whatever. But he did that for me in 2016. And here it is, 2021. Nice. Nice you, guy. He helped you sell a lot of books too, which is. He, li he works uh, in the neighborhood of Grand and Ogden. He moved there. Oh, here's the article of, that we were just talking about, about Taco right. with his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right here, Betty Taco. Um, yeah, this looks like all really interesting stuff on the on the page, so check it out. I'll even throw a link in the um, – uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a link in the description, too, if you guys want to 
check uh, check that out. Marcus, Marcus, this red is so full of crap, dude. Hey, Marcus, don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, seriously, you like Marcus, me, why do you watch me. <laughs> yeah, why do you don't take watch. time to make a comment? If you don't like me, that's it. If you think I'm full of crap, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to your page and say Rich. anything about you. Rich Cassio, how I read how the heights compare with other crews. Did they earn like the other crew and kill like the other crews? And which crew did you like the best? I guess I like Grand and Ogden the best. Um, the Grand and Ogden crew was, I knew everybody, it was closer. Chances are, if I'd known everybody in different crews, uh, I, I would have felt different, but uh. Uh, the Heights compared, it was, it was a, a force to be reckoned with and it had a history. It went way back, um, to the days of Capone. So, I mean, there was a history The it was right by Indiana where a lot of beer was made over the Indiana state line. And, uh, I don't know, uh, Ralph Capone was out in Hickory Hills, but, uh, he was part of that crew at one time. So as comparison, I think they were a powerhouse, but they had their own territory. They didn't leave their territory. Everything changed later on. Instead of territories, it went by leaders of territories. You could go into somebody else's territory, let them know you were there. And they said, okay, well, you owe me one so I can go into your territory with whatever I do. Got you. So that that's interesting how that uh, that's interesting how that worked. Uh, Rich Cassio, I heard the Heights didn't take orders from anyone. Now, I'm sure they took uh, orders from Ayupa, and I'm sure they took orders from Giancana when he was alive, and I'm quite sure they took orders from Ricardo and Rica. Mm -hmm. And also Frank Nitty, who going back then. All right. So on the on the subject of the Heights, Sean Pender said, Do you, have you ever had dinner at the Tivoli restaurant in the Heights? No. No. Okay. I I I I used to um I used to perform at Lorenzetti's in Calumet City and in the Heights. So Lorenzetti's is no longer there. Were you ever there at Lorenzetti's? No, actually, I never really socialized in the Heights. Mm -hmm. I was out there. I lived out there for a while. But once I got to the north side, that was it. So I never went to restaurants out there. I never really socialized mm -hmm. with people. I never hung out with people like I did, uh, you know, on the near north. Got you. Uh, Jim Yeager said, uh, and this is on the Heights uh, subject, was yeah. Alfonso the pizza man, Tornabini, Tornabini. part Tornabini, I said, I got it right. Right. Part of the Chicago Heights crew. Was he part of the Heights crew? You know, I don't know. Uh, the only time I ever even heard his name come up was just before Family Secrets when he disappeared. Um, he was arrested on a, uh, a state charge years ago for gambling. And he was arrested again. And people thought, rumors were, that people thought that he was going to turn government witness. So... The Calabrese family allegedly, or their crew, allegedly got rid of him. Nobody knows what happened to him. It's an unsolved homicide. Some people said he was buried under Comiskey Park. Some people said this. Some people said that. But nobody really knows whatever happened to him. Um, so, so... Uh, I'm reading some of your comments here. This is in, uh, Conroy, Conroy Tatzero. Tot I know you put you put the pronunciation of your last name even in the one of the comments, and I tried to remember it. Tatzero, I think, is right. Uh, Red, your time with the outfit. Did you witness or hear anything of the outfit helping Chicago where the police couldn't? Yes. Like what? Um, if the police were busy, like with riding or something like that. They kind of took care of their own neighborhoods and uh, people weren't afraid, you know, that lived around them. They didn't allow certain things. There are certain mm -hmm. things they just didn't allow. 
They didn't let they didn't allow uh, anybody to come in and damage their, their neighborhood. Uh, they were their own police force. Mm-hmm. They were their own police force. And you know something? The police had turned their head. They wouldn't look. They let them. They let them sort it out amongst themselves. Why? Why would the cops want to get involved? Thirteenth District was like that. I remember the Thirteenth District. It was like, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, well, that's going on. Let's go the other way. We don't want to get involved. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, right that's, around where uh, Grand and Ogden, Coal Fire Pizza's there, all those kind of places. Yes. Our Grand, Grand and May is like uh, 13th District, too, I believe, which is where um, Rosie's Sandwich Shop is. Or it's not that anymore, whatever it is now. I saw your video on that. I thought it was interesting. Oh, thanks. Um, Mike Randolph. Asked if Joe Ferriola had the most soldiers. No. At one time, we thought he did. Mm -hmm. But looking back, he did not. Okay. Um, Calzone83, I want to read your comment. Uh, The Heights was actually a separate mafia family before Capone absorbed them. Dominic Roberto was the first boss. Then Jimmy Amarato. Then Frank Laporte. Frankie Laporte was partners with Jimmy Couture. That was, that was the change. But mm-hmm. it did change. Uh, I don't know the other names. Uh, I'm not a mob historian. Mm-hmm. I, it's not like I read every book going back and, or even watch every video going back on the history. But I'm sure you're accurate, Calzone 83. I'm I, sure you're accurate. Yeah, I, I really like that you guys, uh, Calzone, all of you – that uh, uh, sharing information that you do have, because I think that that's, again, like Red said, he's not a mob historian. I'm not a mob historian. I'm from I'm from the south side of Chicago, but I didn't have any type of, it's not like I sat around and read every book. I mean, my, my ambition in life was <laughs> to perform. <laughs> and when I got to Vegas and became a tour guide for the mob tour, that's one of my, my, you know, interest really started to, 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 you know, grow. But again, it was focused on what my job was because again, people go on a tour, they ask you tons of questions and you need to know the answers. So I learned the things that I needed to learn. (laughs) Um, But, but I mean, the, the information that's some of the stuff that it's gone over is, is like, it's, it's like a different language almost to me. (laughs) That's why I can't pronounce most of it. I met I met a gal in um, in uh, Palm Beach County, Florida, and she was uh, in her late eighties, and she was from Indiana, and she she told me she owned farms in Indiana, and uh-huh. she was telling me about how they came out and the bootlegger or the ATF came out. She hated the ATF, and they uh-huh. used to destroy her place and raid it, and all they. They grew grew crops and uh, made beer. Uh huh. But they would uh, destroy her property and stuff like that. She got raided all the time. Naturally, the mobs used to get raided. <laughs> it was her place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was very interesting. Helen Sant. She's passed away. I'm sure, at least thirty years ago. Yeah. Wow. Um. I just saw in the comments over here uh, that David Grip is uh, Grimp is just uh, checking in, and David emailed me the other day, uh, and I'm, I'm going to share this with you. Um, he emailed me the other day, and David is right now hanging out in Mexico, and that's the view from his balcony right now. <laughs> that he's a uh, poor poor David over there in. Uh, in Is Mexico, looking at this view, this unbelievable view. Hey, thanks David, for sending. Are you in Casamel or are you in Acapulco or where are you at? No, oh, it's nice wherever he is. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for sending me those. That was very, pretty interesting. Uh, Chuck, uh, let let's let Ladusek Ladusek uh, Any Anthony Marino? No Anthony Marino. Right? No, Chuck. I'm sorry. Which crew was he with? Have you know, no, no idea. Calzone, I just showed that book by Matt Luzzi, and uh, it, it's if you highly recommend it, you're the first I one recommend to it. It. I, I recommend it. 
I, I definitely want to. Um, yeah, definitely. I only read the first read. part of it that uh, Amazon lets you read, like mm -hmm. so many pages, and I liked it. Okay. So Lisa wants to know, um, Ketelar wants to know, was there a lot of car bombings in Chicago done by the outfit? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we talked about this once before. Um, during the um, uh, taxi cab union, uh, Jimmy Katura, that's all he did was go around and uh, bomb cars. I mean, for the Capone group, you know. And then he went to prison. So mm -hmm. uh, when he got out, I believe it was 1942. And uh, he was still bombing cars <laughs> all the way to the end and when he got shot and murdered. Now, didn't you say that uh, during those car bombing uh, era, there was some kind of a, a taxi cab wars or something going on? That was I, during the late 20s, early 30s. Mm -hmm. They were trying to organize the taxi cab union. So they were all union. I mean, Checker, Yellow, and all those cabs, they wanted to own them. I mean, it, they, they let the company own them, but they wanted to control them. So anybody that got on a line or wasn't, you know, negotiating properly, they were bombing them. And Jimmy was responsible for like 90% of it. He was, that's how he made his name. That's how he came up with the Cabone era. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, he was from Italy. He, he was born in Italy and he had a, uh, he spoke broken English. When I go, I tell you this, uh, you know, everything was in an Italian accent. <laughs> Larry, La Larry, La Larry La center of his teeth. It was interesting. I remember that most. But now, also, his bald head, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Larry Lapper, I have a friend that was doing time in Lompoc, Lompoc with Carmine, Carmine Persuco. Yes. Carmine Persuco. And he got a call. And he got the call. El Taco was coming in. And he said, we have a big shot from Chicago coming in, so let's roll out the carpet. Wow. I'm sure. I'm oh. sure. Interesting. Uh, okay, I saw this question earlier. Chris Little, uh, why did Tony adopt Vincent? Why didn't he? Do you know? Or they... No, I don't. Yeah, I that's don't. a pretty personal thing. I mean, it's... It's one of those kind of things where um, anybody can guess... I don't know. I don't think anybody does know. There's a lot of questions I don't think anybody has the answer to because, like you said, it's personal. Yes, That's things that are things that are personal. That personal, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that being public knowledge. So, okay, Sopranos fan, interesting. I'm sure most of you know this, but I found this out recently. NFL stars Joey and Nick. Bosa are great grandsons of Tony Accardo. They certainly are. Now that isn't that interesting because I did not know that. This is the first time I'm he hearing has, that. He has two grandsons in the NFL. Wow, isn't that something? I did not did not know that. It's the first time I'm hearing that. They all went legit. The whole families went legit. Accardo's families never went into the, or members of his family never went into the business. Mm -hmm. They just. So, uh, and John, mind, he's probably the sharpest, sharpest guy that uh, ever ran the outfit in Chicago. He was careful. He yeah. never went to prison. Uh, even though he got indicted for income tax evasion, he always won. Hmm. So, he was clever. Hmm. You know, you don't get caught. I mean, that's no. no. That's the point, right? Well, he was indicted. He was brought before the grand jury. He was brought before uh, uh, the Senate hearing committees on racketeering. And he really didn't take the Fifth Amendment. A lot of times he just said, no, no. Uh, what did you do for a living? And his lawyer whispered in his ear. I think he was getting kind of uh, dementia at the time. But his lawyer whispered in his ear and he said, I gambled. That's what I did. I gambled because they asked him if he ever did anything illegal. Mm -hmm. 
he wasn't a wise guy like Giancana. He didn't give uh, repeatedly, you know, I plead the Fifth Amendment. I plead the Fifth Amendment. I plead the Fifth Amendment. He didn't do right. that. Right. Uh, so, so John McShane said, I, I heard a weird story about Giancana confronting or threatening a Cardo. Any truth to that? There was rumor to it. I don't know for, for firsthand, but there was rumor to it. Uh, they were having an argument, a, a big war about um, Giancana having, um, it was in Iran. He had some gambling casinos and whatever overseas. And that was during his exile to Mexico. And Accardo, Tony probably, I, I assume everybody says he did, he said he wanted half of the proceeds because he was still part of the outfit, right? Even though he was exiled, he was still part of the outfit. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to give up half the proceeds. <laughs> he said, the heck with it. I'm not doing it. And those things ran from, I don't know, when the Shah of Iran uh, left and came to the United States, I think that was around 1958, 59, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And I believe he left in... Uh, 66, if I'm not mistaken. So whatever he did with his overseas gambling money, he did not want to share it with Tony Accardo. Were there threats made? Yeah. Uh, there were rumors that they were threatening each other back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then when he got brought back to Chicago and Romer was over him, all over him like white on rice, uh, there were some disputes that they had between them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so, so, so you, you knew, you knew, uh, Bill Hanhart, right? Quite well. Okay. That answers the question, Scott H and, uh, correct. Sean, a fish with his mouth shut never gets caught. That's correct. Frank said to me once that, uh, Accardo said, said, Hey, you know why that, uh, why that fish is over there in the wall? Cause he didn't keep his mouth shut. And, uh. That was, that was something that went around. A lot of people talked about that. A lot said that. That was a, a very notable quote. Oh, yeah. um, Rich Cassio, did you know that Bill Romer had to give an okay to the NFL commissioner when Eric Kumaro was drafted? He is the grandson of Ocardo. The Bossos were his great-grandsons. No, I didn't know that. Did not know that Bill Romer had to give an okay and I knew to the Bill NFL. Romer. I knew Bill Romer. Yeah. He used to come when he left Chicago. I talked to him a few times in Chicago. But when he left Chicago and he went to Arizona uh, to work on the Bonanno family, um, he was always a, a strike force uh, a FBI mob squad. But um, I talked to him quite a bit. And then he retired and he started writing his books. And the first book, Man Against the Mob, I think was the best book he ever did. I didn't particularly care for the rest of them. A lot of people say that they were inaccurate. All right, George. John Wilfred Bassa, or yeah, I think it's Bosa, Bassa, the father of Joe and Nick, who played for the Dolphins, my That's team, correct. is from New Hampshire and went to Boston College. Why the connection to Chicago? When they married and, the, you know, when the children married and things, it, they went off in different directions, different cities. Tony didn't want them to be involved with him. They didn't want him to be. And I believe at that time he'd already bought the house in Palm Springs. A lot of times he wasn't even in Chicago. When his house was uh, robbed uh, by the burglars and everything. He was in Palm Springs. Jackie Cerrone called him and told mm -hmm. him your house was broken to. Uh, Rick, you're correct. They, there are taverns, especially little neighborhood taverns. Uh, I might have said bars, but uh, yeah. We call they, them bars. Only people from Chicago call them bars. Everybody yeah. else call them taverns. But My, when you apply for a liquor license, it said right on there, you cannot use the word saloon. It's uh, illegal to word, use the word saloon in Cook County. Why? I guess because back in the old days, they called them saloons and they were like brothels and everything else all wrapped up in one. Got it. 
Um, Joshua Farber, any stories about Mo Daylitz? Well, Mo Daylitz was uh, was born in 1899 on Christmas, Christmas Day, 1899. That's why I call him the Jewish Santa Claus, because <laughs> no, because he he was yeah. born on Christmas Day, but but he also Mo Daylitz was one of the most giving. Most philanthropic. Uh, 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 um, he was. He was a philanthropist. He was a. He did so much for Vegas. He supported the public library system when it went bankrupt uh, for a few years until it got back on its feet. He donated to all of the uh, civic uh, centers. If you worked at the Desert Inn, he opened the Desert Inn in 1952, and Wilbur Clark was the front man. It was a failed casino project, but but Mo Daylitz was the 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 guy behind it who had the money who put into it and uh, and 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 ran things but mo Dalis, he did so much he 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 donated money to the church of the guardian angel which is a catholic church even the land which was owned which sat there right at desert inn just south of the uh, uh the encore but anyway mo mo did a whole lot and it was mo Dalitz. his family was involved with um the linen business they were in the linen business and that's how he used linen trucks and did the bootlegging in the 30s yeah so right and in mo Dalitz, and the linen business it was union so that's how he ended every hotel a casino and that's what put him in contact with Jimmy Hoffa. And the two of them built the relationship because he needed Teamsters to drive the trucks. So, and now they're doing their bootlegging. Well, uh, anyway, Mo Dalitz, uh, when, when, when he was in Vegas in the 50s, went to Jimmy Hoffa and got the first two Teamsters pension fund loans. And the first two Teamsters pension fund loans did not go to casinos like Circus Circus and Tropicana and Stardust and Hacienda and all of them. The first one went and built uh, Sunrise Hospital because we didn't have a hospital in Las Vegas. If you had a heart attack, you were airlifted to LA. Chances are you didn't make it. So they built Sunrise Hospital. And then the second loan built Boulevard Mall, which is right in the center of Las Vegas. And that's uh, that's it's right in the middle of Las Vegas. And it's a big shopping center. Now it's closing down. You know, back in those days, you had to order out of the Sears Robux catalog. And then the pieces would come to town on a train or a wagon. And, 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 and that's it. But anyways... Uh, Mo lived until the age of 89. He died of natural causes. Unlike most of the guys that I led poisoning, he went naturally. And uh, yeah, he was a, he, he just did a whole lot. He was a very giving guy, which is why I, why I say. Did Jewish they build Santa a monument was. for him out there? Like, no, no. And that's the thing. If you, if you, if you ask me, there ought to be a monument built to him, not Bugsy. Well, he I did just, a lot for the community. He yes. did it for the community. He built middle income housing out here. He did. I, he did so much. It, it's just he 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 was awarded the Jewish Defamation Torch Award. He was. I mean, this guy did a lot for the for the community and for uh, for Las Vegas. Grievous. People it's, don't give him some recognition. Yes. Or the so. family. I, you know, is his family still out there? You know. Well, yes, there is. There's a Dalitz Foundation, and, and yes, it's uh, it's still out here. And I believe his, um, I believe his, <laughs> I have I have her card sitting over here. I believe his daughter or granddaughter is in charge of the foundation. So you know, there's a lot of people that did a lot of good things, and then there's a lot of people that all you hear about is the negative stuff. So and so mm -hmm. got clipped, or this happened because of this or that or whatever. But there are some people that really donated to uh, the churches, uh, hospitals, children's hospitals, things like that, that you just never hear about. Because that's not newsworthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm, he sounds like that one. I've heard Tyson. his name before. Tyson Zacosta. Mo Dalitz was as dirty as anyone else. Sorry, I'm not buying that he was a good man crap. Okay, I'm not saying he was a good man. I said he did a lot of good for the community. Okay, there's I a difference. There's I a big said. difference with that, Tyson. You only hear the, the bad stuff. You don't hear the good stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you don't. I you know I I don't know. It's a fine line there because 
you may do some good things for some people. That doesn't make you a good person. That's true. Just because you did something good for somebody doesn't make you a good person. So, you know, come on and get off this subject. Larry Lapper. What do you want to talk about, Larry? Uh, because I was kind of letting you guys drive this thing. Um, but if, if you want to, if you want to hear more about Mo Dalitz, you guys can go on the uh, the Vegas mob tour. Okay. How's and that? it would appear that you are pretty knowledgeable about everything on it, on the subject. Yes. See, again, I learned and know the things that I need to know about Vegas and the mob uh, because that's it's my job. So um, and anyhow, Nick Hewitt, love your show. Guys, keep up the great work. Hey, do you know any do you, uh, Red? Do you know any boys in Oak Lawn? Not now, but Jimmy Couture lived there. He lived mm -hmm. in Oak Lawn and his sons lived right on the same block or right next to his house, next to his house was Carl's house and his younger son, I forgot the name of Carl's younger brother, but he lived in the house next door to that. So it was kind of like a big area. It was a double lot where they owned from street to street on both sides. And they kind of owned a, a lot of the area. It's like they bought a field and built a bunch of three houses out there. Hmm. Somebody told me um, recently that uh, they went out to look at uh, uh, Carl's house. Jimmy Couture, somebody bought it uh, within the past year or so, and they said it was gorgeous. It, it was just the way it was back in the day. The swimming pool was there. The people were very nice that bought it, and they were good neighbors. Mm -hmm. Was there things going on in Oakland? Yeah, a lot. If Jimmy was there, there was trouble. Wow. So uh, I'm 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 reading the comments again, and I see here uh, I see here that uh, Grievous and Grievous I I'm I got to tell you, pal, he he, he did. I, Mo Daylitz did give to the to the church, man. Come on, man, he gave to the church. <laughs> he, I have a question. I have a question. I know, no, 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 I, I, How come people believe something? They weren't there. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And you didn't see it, but you read about it. But you're going to argue that point that you know you know the answer to it. Why? Tell me why. Can anybody <laughs> uh What church, the Mickey Mouse one or the real one? Well, Grievous, I'm going to tell you which church. And you can look this up if you'd like. So can everybody else if you want to, if you doubt me. The Church of the Guardian Angel Cathedral, the Guardian Angel Cathedral in Las Vegas. The land was donated by Mo Dalitz. The land is worth a lot of money. I don't know exact. I'm not going to say numbers, but it's strip property. So it's worth a lot of money. Okay. And in the stained glass of this church, there is uh, depicted... Tragedy and comedy masks. This isn't, this isn't, I'm not making this up. As a matter of fact, here, there, there's a picture of the stained glass in the church. You see the comedy and tragedy masks here? When I look down, this is in the church in Las Vegas. That's the landmark casino. That's the Hilton. See the big stardust, the word stardust, yeah. and then stands over here. And then this was the Desert Inn, front and center, the Desert Inn, okay? And th this was designed into the stained glass. There is also in the stained glass poker chips. Um, the, the parishioners wanted all of this to be taken out and taken down. So Dalitz uh, have something to do, Dalitz has something to do with the Desert Inn? Wasn't he the owner? Of yes, the yes, he was the That's he was the I owner. Thought. He was the owner of the Desert Inn. I uh, said Wilbur Clark's Desert Inn, but Wilbur Clark was the host. He was the front guy. Uh, and, and Mo Dalitz really ran the ran the show. So yeah, there's a lot of history to that church. This is why I bring it up because you know it's it's just very interesting how how that. There's a lot of history in Las Vegas, <laughs> right? Uh, Pam, I did not read your comment. I must have missed it. I'm I'm scrolling back and back and back, and I still don't see it. Pam, up um, oh, there you go. 
uh, when I talk to people who were born and raised here, they say this place was way better when the mob ran it. And I've heard that same thing, Pam. Uh, it, 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 you know, same thing. It, even, it, it, even in the movie Casino, they kind of say the truth. They said, you know, before you got perfect service from everybody. There was no problems. There was no muggings. There was no this. You were safe in the casino. If you were in the casino, you were safe. And if you mm -hmm. wanted to go to another casino, all you had to do is get in a taxi and go there, and nobody was going to rob you. Nobody was going to bother you. It's not like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Room service, you may get it two hours. You know, like in the movie Casino, they talked about it. They don't know your name. Nobody shakes hands with you. It's just a big circus now. It's a big event where before it was more personalized. And the junkets, people went back and back and back and back. I don't know if they do that anymore. Uh, they, you know, the world is if you lose enough money, okay, if you lose enough money. So back in the day when the mob ran Vegas, it was, um, it was, hey, Mr. We Met. I see you're 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 playing. I'm I'm some you know Mr. Giovanni, and I here here's a couple of tickets to our buffet. Enjoy. And then later, if he saw you sitting around at the tables, he'd come over and go, "Hey, I'm sorry. Would you like to? Would you like to stay here? We'll call, and send for your luggage down at the Sands, bring it over here to the Dunes, and we'll put you know. They wanted to keep you there. And then if you lost even more money, I'm really sorry, Mister. We met. I really. You know, the, the cars just didn't fall with you. But l listen, in a few months, if you'd like to come back out here, we'll send a plane for you. We'll give you the room. You don't have to pay. You won't have to pay for anything. Just bring money with to put into the casino. And they understood. When I was out there, I got comps for all my food. Um, they'd actually, I was playing blackjack at a blackjack table. They would actually bring my, <laughs> they'd roll it to the table. They didn't want me to leave because I was winning. Yeah. And they didn't want me to leave, so they just – I wrote about it in my book. It was yeah. a tr – and I'd never seen anything like it before. I was just a young kid. Um, I, it's, 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 it's just – it's incredible how the town has changed from that to what we have today, where they're Too like, oh. Commercial. Too much you, commercial. You, you want to park in our garage? That'd be $20. What? 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 There was you no want to park the park? I was out there. There was no parking they fees. Just, right they just started this crap. They just started this just a, a few years ago, and and they're starting to charge for parking in Vegas. And you know, it's 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 ridiculous. It's gotten to the point of just ridiculous. And now, if you want a free buffet or a which they're starting to open those back up again. Uh -huh. um, I just read that the other day uh, that they're they're reopening a couple of them in town. Uh, but if, if you wanted a free buffet, you got to go down there to the, 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 the kids sitting there at the desk, you know, like, Hey, can I get a buffet? And they're like, uh, well, let me, let me see your card. Let me see how many, well, nope, you, you only get one buffet. You get over here, go lose another $10,000 and then we'll give you another buffet. You know, that's what it is nowadays. It's just, it's just totally, it's just all. Yeah. So anyway, uh, hi, Mickey. Yeah, 20, $20 oh, to park. Comment, Mickey. You're saying howdy, Red. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, Tyson, I'm not kidding about it. It's, it's crazy. Uh, and, and Grievous, isn't it like Disneyland now? Grievous, yes. it's like Disneyland. Look, taking a kid to Las Vegas is like taking a hooker to Disneyland. Okay. This isn't <laughs> Disneyland over here. It's Vegas. It's they have a lot of amusement parks and different rides and things like that what? where people send the kids off to do this while they gamble. Sure. So I th that all started in the 80s when they had all of the, the big. Actually, it started earlier than that because Flamingo did a big advertising campaign, said, said, bring your family to Vegas. Maybe the kids will catch a glimpse of Bugsy Siegel's ghost. They, they actually advertised that. And it was a, to get people to come to Vegas with their families. And it's just all um, it's just all. It's all, it's all crazy from what it used to be. And as far as, um, Tom, as far as the hookers go, you're right. Disneyland does have the best ones. And, <laughs> um, and I, I'm, I'm, uh, Lisa, uh, we're on keto, no more buffets. Lisa, you could still go to the buffet and pile your plate with bacon. <laughs> and See? other 
and other uh, other things, uh, mushrooms or whatever, just don't take any pasta. <laughs> Still eat pasta, exactly. Exactly. So I was there in the 80s when they had free or cheap buffets and drinks. Scott H., that's when they had the nickel arcades because I was a kid when I stayed at Circus Circus. And it was, it was you know, nickels. I couldn't believe it because in Chicago, everything was quarters. So... I've got a I've got a story for you, Scott, uh, about you know you talk about the jinx or cheap buffets and drinks, and I drank Royal Salute Scotch, and that's a twenty one year Scotch. It's kind of expensive. It's a top shelf Scotch. It's a few hundred dollars a bob. At any rate, uh, uh, now I got to order it if I'm going to get it, but it's getting rare. At any rate. When you're winning at the tables, they send you over a complimentary drink. The waitress, that you know, the somebody that a floor man will come over and say, "Give him a drink, give him whatever he wants," you know, whatever. And so the waitress would say, "What do you want?" Well, I told her I wanted a royal salute, straight up with a water back. And she came back, and the minute I tasted, I could tell the charcoal flavor to it that it was. Uh, if you're a Scotch drinker, you know, it was uh, Johnny Walker Red. I could tell right away. They insisted that it was what it was. When I gathered my chips together and I started to leave, they said, wait. They brought a bottle out and opened it right in front of me and poured it and kept the <laughs> bottle there. They left the bottle for me. Oh, my God. I a water so I could, you know, chase them down. They wanted me to get drunk. So I'd lose my money or their money. Um. Crime organizations and bold crimes. Late, what's the topic? I want to know what your channel's about. I've never seen you before, and you have an interesting name. So, crime organizations and bold crimes. I want to go check out this guy's channel or girl's channel. So, Scott H. Mo was Mr. Scott Las Vegas. More interesting than the Donuts Chronicles. <laughs> oh God, let's not even go there with that guy. You know, you know. Uh, it's unbelievable. Let's not even go there. You don't, you know, okay. why, give, why give the guy any kind of, any kind of time? I just uh, got some subscribers, so. Yes. Um, so Nick Macy was kicked out of Fenwick. You were kicked out of Fenwick, Nick. Really? Uh, he also said he had two sons in the mafia, in the NFL. We, we said that already, Ricardo. I heard that for the first time earlier. Um, yeah. So, Nick and I have talked about that in, in Mike's room because Mike's posted that. Right. Red, do you think the outfit's going to make a comeback? I don't think so, ever. After Rico took him apart, the Rico statute took him apart, it's like Humpty Dumpty. They're never going to put it back together again. Never going to put it back together. The politicians are the comeback of the mob. Yeah. Yeah. That's the comeback, Tom. Yep, that's that's that, that's it, and they've come back in a in a force to would have would have made the '60s and '70s guys look like angels. You know, speaking of politicians, we had a president that made a statement. I'm not going to mention his name. You'll know who he is, but he said, "Don't waste your money going to Las Vegas." Oh yeah, <laughs> we're going into some money, and yeah. I thought, boy. That's never going to go Democratic again because no, nope. I, I, I remember, I remember that, and and you know what, it was unbelievable. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe that 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 was said. Like, don't don't go. Just, you know, it stay opened away. my eyes. Like, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, Conroy, I prefer prefer them over the politicians as well. I trust the mob more than the Chicago politicians. Terrence, no kidding, right? I do too. Uh, we have. We even have a video about Frank. You saw us before, Adam. This channel is new, three months. Well, cool. Crime uh, organizations and bold crimes. I will go and all of you guys go check out that video over there yeah, about I'm Frank. Check out your go channel. Check it out. Today. Yeah. Um, Keith, have you ever seen Michael Francis Red? Yes, I, only on uh, only on uh, YouTube. I've seen him on YouTube. Right. The born again mobster. <laughs> yes. Uh, Rusty wants to know if you knew Char Charlie Shepard. No, I did not. 
doesn't even doesn't ring a bell. Does not ring a bell. Um, Occasionally, somebody will come up with somebody, and I know. You know, I, I'll say, "Yeah, I remember him," but there's a lot of people I didn't know. Everybody that was an associate, connected, or burglars or whatever, I just didn't know everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot of separate crews too, and I kind of kept my nose to the grindstone to see where I was at. Kind of, not always. Mm -hmm. a good way to be i suppose so keep you out of trouble for me i got yeah. done what i needed to do um agenda yeah you know. uh, oh, 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 oh sorry adam that was for nick rusty oh sorry that was for nick 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 uh nick rusty macy. wants to know yeah nick macy rusty wants to know if you know charlie shepherd yeah, <laughs> there. I'm gonna. I'll let you know right that way. That that, that way. Okay. So, um, uh, duped. Explain when the Packers released Joey is when Rogers started his pissing fight with management. Oh, we're back to the NFL. Them being in the NFL. Okay. Uh, who do you think among the ex mobsters on his podcast is the biggest fibber? Oh God. But out of all of there's them, not on, on there, out of all the podcasts, who's out the of one? all of them, there's only one. Giovanni Russo. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does them all. Unbelievable. So, uh, anyway, uh, this has been a this has been a fun redness day, and you guys have been awesome. And I uh, again, just uh, you know, like I say, I'm I'm I'm. I'm glad that the, you guys were all here and Red, I'm glad you were here for this last hour because it's been a nice a little distraction for me uh, for to you, get out of my... For those of you that don't know it, my phone, it's very hot here and I left my phone in the car and the battery got fried. So it's uh, sitting in front of the air conditioning so it'll work. I couldn't even talk to Adam before we went on the air. Yeah, it uh, was just... We're, we're lucky we made the show. Yeah. I, and please I, give Adam a hand here. Subscribe or prescribe. <laughs> prescribe, yeah. Hit the like button too, guys. Yes. Um, hit, hit the like button. And uh, you know, it's it's been it's been an awesome afternoon. And like I say, I uh you know, I had a um you know, I had a big Thank loss. You, Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. I'm sure Adam does too. Thank you, Lisa. Um so let me let me pull this up and I'm going to see if I can share that. Good. I don't Thank know you, if the Thank volume you. shared. Uh, but anyhow, I, I just for those of you who haven't been here since the very beginning of this broadcast, uh, I lost a really close friend who was my best friend and uh, he passed away yesterday. So. I'm just going to close out this uh, mob vlog and play this for you guys, because uh, he was a really he was a really great guy, and um, I'm really going to miss this guy. So let's take a look at. You have a heart, Adam. You really have a heart. Oh, Can you hear that, Red? I no sound. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Um, let me <clears throat> remove that and try it one more time here. Um, share and let me share. They looked like they were different places. Him and his wife. They looked like they were in the snow and they were all different places. Oh, he liked to travel. They liked to travel. They liked to go camping. Um, they were, uh, you know, quite the uh, outdoorsy people. Yes, they, they sure were. Okay, so um, there we go. So anyhow, uh, thank you guys for, for watching today. And uh, yeah, uh, Red, can you hear this? Yes, I, I, I don't hear any sound from them. I hear you, but you know something? Do you hear it now? Yes, I do. This room lost an amazing coworker and friend. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of wrecks today. A lot of them, yeah. A lot. Paul Howard, a photojournalist on the front line of breaking news in Salt Lake City for three years. You know, we get pelted with snow throughout the day. And yeah. Feet wet and snow goes down our back. 
He worked hard, and he woke up very early to bring the news to your TV screen every weekday morning. He was the best of the best, and he made work feel like it wasn't even work. You've aged wonderfully, too, I'd yeah. say. Nah. I think Mary would agree. I think this gummy bear is better looking. <laughs> Paul always had that trademark smile on his face. Go ahead. All right. Round the rough and rugged rock, the ragged rascal rudely ran. And would make us all laugh with his big stash of dad jokes. Watches which bitch would watch which watch. Wow, that is tough. He was a baseball player, loved his Cubs. He was a Wrigley when they won the World Series. And he was Bon Jovi's greatest fan ever. Paul even lip-synced his way onto the big screen of a sold-out Bon Jovi concert in Chicago. Paul leaves behind his wife, Mary, their two dogs, and a news family who love him very much. Way too young. In his 40s, a big loss for all of us here at 2 News. Paul was a familiar and a friendly face for all of us here in the KUTV 2 Newsroom. And while he mainly worked with the morning team, we all had a chance to work with Paul. He was always willing to pick up shifts, whether it was on the weekends for special projects or at night. He brought his camera and an amazing attitude trying to tell the stories of Utah families at home. Yeah, I had an opportunity to work with him on one of those volunteer days on a story that uh, we worked on in central Utah, and he devoted several hours to that on that weekend helping me out. Uh, there's a picture, shooting the baby cows. Yeah, he was facing those cows, and uh, he wasn't afraid. <laughs> no, so. The cows might have been afraid. He was he... so great to work with. He, you know, just easy to work with. It felt like Ron said. It just felt like you were having fun. I think that was the last story he shot for us, and that that's going to air. That's your story. Yeah, that it's airs. airing. It's airing tomorrow night at ten or tomorrow night at ten o'clock. So yeah. all the video you see in there will be calls. We want to give you a little peek at the snapshot. We know a lot of you get to see us on TV, but it takes a real village to get the news on air. Our photojournalists do an amazing job. Yeah, they really tell the story through the cameras, and they make us look good. Well, we're thinking of his wife, Mary, his two dogs that he loves so much as well. Uh, our thoughts with all of them tonight. Hey, Red, thanks a lot for uh You should dedicate the show to Paul. Yeah, this F9 one. F9 took in a million Yeah, this one's dedicated. Uh, a lot of times people don't understand. Tell them the story. He used to photograph you. Yeah, that's why he became a news photographer, actually. He would go off and, and all of the, uh, when, I mean, we grew up since... We, we knew each other when we were 11 years old and we, uh, yeah, he used to run the camera <laughs> and he was, he was really good at videoing, you know, um, my magic. He was always stuff. there to help you. He was your real true friend. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he videoed this part. That was him. He got that one. Got this one too. Yeah, so he, and he was great, great with the videoing, and and I told him when we got in our 20s, and, and he moved to Denver, I moved to Vegas, and I was like, you know, you should be, a, you know, doing something with your life. He was doing uh, something that he wanted to do. He was you know, to Do something you love doing. Because if you love what you do, you never have to work. Right. So... I'm so sorry last, for everyone's loss that was close to him, especially his family and you, Adam. It's like you guys were from the sandbox to the end, and you outlived him. So I know it's got to hurt. Uh, my partner and mentor told me, he said, he said, it's, it's really tough to find your friends, and it's tougher to lose them. It's true. So, anyway, when you lose somebody that you care about, it hurts. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he he got the bird flu, and that's what happened. And he didn't uh, he didn't get to the hospital in time. And uh, yeah. So, anyway, he'll be missed. You're gonna be missed, Paul. And uh, I'll say a prayer for him, Adam. <clears throat> Thanks. And, and and his loved ones and people that loved him, let's hope they come to Jeez. peace with him. Yeah. 
I'm actually going to go call his dad and talk to his dad for a little bit today. So, um, God his soul. Gotta be killing his dad to watch him lose lose a kid. So, Too young. It's crazy. Anyway, um, Red, thanks for being here today. Uh, everybody who who's watched, thanks for being here. You guys all. Uh, maybe maybe each week. Sometimes I get to give you guys a little hour of distraction, but this week you guys get gave me an hour. So, thanks, my vlog.